I'm really excited to even read your book. Congratulations on that. You like it's already creating a lot of intrigues about the stories that you want to tell. And we would love to hear it all about it. Write a book now. Like, why did you think this is the right time? Well, it's the right time in my life because uh, I'd come to a point where either I tell my story or I don't. And I figured I really need to tell my story because I think it's a very interesting story. And having lived it, um, I know everything that I went through, the highs and lows, the milestones and mistakes, the uh, um, triumphs and tragedies, everything. Either I didn't write it at all or I read it as honestly as I could. So it was a decision I made. Actually, I've been wanting to write this for a long time. I just didn't, I, I didn't know how to tell the story. And I finally, I figured that out. Um, about a year ago, and just when the pandemic struck, it was a it was a, a great time for me to sit down and, and write. And much as I feel for the suffering of all those who have suffered from this pandemic, I have certainly benefited from it because it cleared a lot of distractions. Um, do you think that uh, right now all the limelight is being put on the relationships and the marriages that you have lived through? And there are certain chapters that we still you know, should focus on there are more, uh, the more important chapters of your life, more deep, rather, chapters of your life. What are they? Um, of course, chapters on Praveen and Prathima are, are part of uh, my life. I can't deny that. But they're just two chapters in my life. Um, the rest of the book concerns many other things that happened in my life and all the other great uh, adventures that I went through, all the countries I lived in, the film industries I operated in, uh, the films I made, uh, and other dramas that happened along the way. So yes, um, other chapters do need to be looked at because the women you speak of are just two chapters out of eight. So uh, it would be good to focus on the other things that, that began my journey, for instance, that um, started in Delhi, then uh, with an interview with the Beatles and how that was transformative in my life, uh, how it sort of catapulted me out of Delhi into Bombay, into a career in, in advertising, then theater, then film, and all the dramas that happened along the way. Um, and these are interesting stories because I chose to tell my book through a series of stories that were pivotal in my life and I just find the short story form a much more dynamic form of writing. And it takes me out of the necessity of being constantly linear and go back and forth in time, which makes it much more interesting for, for me in the telling and for the reader in the reading. So which has been your favorite chapter while you were writing it? Or now that you read, uh, it comes out like, oh, this was a better chapter. <laughs> you know, kisi maa se poochho kaan sa bachya sundar, you know, <laughs> you, I've written them all. Each one actually is dramatically different to the other, both in style and content. And the way I've, I've, I've chosen to write that is to stay true to the spirit of that chapter and that story. So, whereas the chapter that propelled me from Delhi and how I managed to get an interview with the Beatles and uh, how that pivotally changed my life is written in a certain style. There's a lot of dialogue in there, as well as um, some very important childhood relationships. So beyond that, you know, certainly the most difficult uh, was the chapter on my son, because that involved his, his battle with schizophrenia. But also, I think one of my favorite chapters is my chapter on beliefs, where I talk about how my beliefs have changed over the years and, and the questions I've tried to answer of, of and answers I've tried to discover of uh, where we all came from, how it all began, um, what is the truth of the matter? Uh, is there one God or many? Are there, is there heaven or hell? Is there rebirth or not? Is there free will or is there de uh, destiny? Uh, many things that bothered me all my life and many aspects of questions that I, that I couldn't get a definitive answer on. And the conclusions that I've reached uh, after a lifetime of search, I've laid them, laid them down.
And I've met a lot of um, great people in my life, seen a lot of great things, but above all, to try and understand the meaning of it all. And I think uh, that itself should be worth the price of the book. But there's many, many more things in there. So when you read your book, uh, you have been really volatile in your choices. You've been a free, free bird all over. So uh, do you think uh, when you look back at, in your life, uh, I'm sure you feel proud. Every decision is amazing uh, unless you like until you come out like with flying co colors over there. But is there any chapter that you would like to revisit and rewrite it in your own way now? now that the life is more stable, now that you're looking at different dimensions? Well, you know, the hindsight, we all have 2020 vision, you know. We can all say, in that situation, I should have done this, I could have done this, I would have done this. Those are things which are the what-ifs of history, you know. What if Britain had never granted India independence in 47? <laughs> what if uh, Caesar had never crossed the Rubicon? All those are the what-ifs we don't know, we can't say. But I look at everything I did, even the mistakes I made, as learning experiences and experiences that have shaped me to be the man I am today. So everything I did in the past has got me to, to today. And now I have a very fulfilling relationship in my life with Praveen Dusanj, my wife. Um, and I feel I, I have received the greatest honors uh, from Italy, being knighted. Uh, as Cavaliere. I'm seen as a legendary icon, having created the character of Sandokan in Italy. So there's many deep satisfactions at the end of that journey. And everything I did on that journey got me to this point. So I can't fault uh, anything I did uh, as being a mistake. I, I don't see it as a mistake. I see it as a learning experience. Perhaps some I should have ended earlier than, than later. Uh, those things one can never say for sure. But they all shaped me. They all shaped me. What I've discovered in life is the smallest things can have the largest effects. You don't realize how, as I said in one of my chapters, a chance encounter can change your life. And often it does. Well, because that's the beginning of my chapter with Pratima. Um, but um, it was a chance encounter. And many things followed from there um, with... Um, Parveen was a whole different experience. Um, with um, my parents, I had another completely different experience because they were these remarkable figures that went from being freedom fighters to becoming major religious, religious figures. My um, mother was, was, was English, but became more Indian than the Indians. She was a Gandhian Satyagrahi. She became the highest rank Buddhist nun. My father was... Um, uh, a flaming communist during the uh, freedom movement, but ended up as a philosopher in Italy. So there's a lot of uh, uh, a lot of uh, transformation that happened there. And yet, when you see their lives, despite being separated by their beliefs, despite being separated by continents, they remain soulmates. So it's an extraordinary relationship I talk about, and that's one chapter in my book. So there are many stories within stories. And um, fortunately, I had lots of, preserved lots of letters um, from people involved in my life, et cetera, so I could quote them, uh, their letters, their books, their writings, and show things from their point of view as well. Because I have tried to treat all people uh, with respect, but without being uh, maudlin about it. If, if they did something wrong, in, as I saw it at that time, I said so. And if I did something wrong, I said so. So there's no sugarcoating here. It's a very honest, raw, real account of my life. Talking about relationships, you've always been in a volatile, passionate relationships where, and also, uh, you know, way ahead of their times, whether it was an open marriage relationship with Pratima or uh, transcontinental with Nikki or living with uh, Parveen Dosanjh you have always you know kind of been the first one to do it uh how, like where did all that thinking came from to being that you know forward thinking in the times when people didn't even think anything beyond marriage you know i always want to be different in some way 
And I think the courage to be different came from my parents who lived such unusual and different lives. And I learned from them that you can be different and you can take the path less traveled and survive if you believe in it enough. So I always fancied myself as a bit of a rebel. I read Albert Camus, you know, who said, it is the rebels within society that make it dynamic. And that was a line I quoted to John Lennon and he'd read him too. So th that thought remained. And don't forget the 60s and 70s were times of great social revolutions and, and churn. Um, there were the Beatles, the Doors, Simon and Garfunkel, the Pink Floyd, the Rolling Stones, all these bands were coming out. The era of the post-war formalism was, was dying, flower power was everywhere, hippies were on the streets, people were demonstrating for peace in, uh, in the Vietnam War. Uh, the pill had come and liberated people sexually. So there was a whole new social liberation that took place uh, in the West. And that the, the winds of that were coming to India. And I certainly wanted to be part of that revol social revolution. So we pushed the boundaries here in India as well. We didn't set out to have an open marriage, but um, that, that evolved over time. But the very fact that Prathima and I lived together uh, was a scandal in those days. There were magazine articles saying they live together, you know? <laughs> Today it would be news. But those were the moles of those times. And, and we, um, we, were, we almost delighted in, 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 um, in uh, being sort of trailblazers of a different kind. And all the emotional dramas that led to it happening. One of Prathima's things was when she got angry, she would sit down and write this journal. So a lot of the things that were written in that book or said in articles were sometimes said in anger. Uh, and also she had the gift of embroidery. She, she would uh, um, build on on certain facts and statements. Um, she was a highly colorful person, many, many wonderful traits. So it's not an easy relationship to define in a simple word, in a few words in an interview. Uh, but I have tried to define it as deeply and as sensitively as I could. So uh, chapter with right Parveen, book. this is um, completely mandatory to discuss, but uh, it's, it's, it was the perfect, rosy, glamorous romance that the world saw. I mean, can you describe something about that relationship that, you know, stood out or stayed with you forever till now? The relationship I had with Parveen Bhavi was, was very special. It was one of, of intense uh, love and uh, passion, and yet there were clouds over it. Uh, created by honor of, of startup itself. So I have, I have um, shared that whole journey from beginning to end um, as best as I could, because this is a story that begins in the 70s and, and ends in the year 2000, because in spite of our separation, there was always a connect of kinds, and I did see her uh, before she passed away. She was a woman that I loved deeply, and um, I put down uh, my memory of her um, as frankly and yet as respectfully as I could. That's great. We would love to um, read that. So uh, moving on to the next question is about Pooja Bedi. So her uh, relationship with Parveen Dosanjh was not very, uh, you know, it was a little bit bumpy. Uh, how are the uh, you know, how is it, uh, is, has, has it evolved over the times or uh, now that things have changed? You know, um, I think everyone in town knows that I had a major disagreement with Pooja or certain things. Um, that relationship, uh, that, that, that conflict has now been resolved. And I'd really now rather not discuss it because we have a happy relationship now. How they feel about each other, um, that's a question you should ask them. <laughs> okay, so do you, does your book also have a chapter on Alaya and Pooja? No, it doesn't have a chapter on Pooja and a chapter on Alaya. Pooja crops up from time to time because she's certainly, um, you know, uh, she's, she, she's in uh, certain stories. But these are not about Pooja, not about Alaya, although I've mentioned them in my book. I, I think Alaya is going to be not only a major star, but she will be become 
one of the most um, talented actresses of her generation. I truly believe that I loved her in a movie and your excitement about her receiving the award, everything is so visible on social media as well. That was such a magical moment, presenting my granddaughter the uh, Best Debut Actress Filmfare Award. I absolutely adore her. I'm proud of her achievements. I know how hard she's worked and she will be brilliant uh, in the years to come. She has all my blessings. So uh, behind all these controversial headlines and uh, all the um, you know buzz and drama around the relationships and controversies, I always felt that there is this emotional man behind all this who's waiting for to tell his part of the story, or and he's somewhere very soft and who doesn't like to you know wash the dirty linen in public. So what do you have to say about that? I'd say you're very perceptive. I'd say you're very perceptive because it's true. I'm not the best self-promoter. I'm not the one that wants to rush out and tell my side of the story because if something negative is happening. I just feel that gives it more oxygen. And um, there's a saying, uh, never wrestle with a pig. Um, both will get dirty, but the pig will enjoy it. So <laughs> what I'm saying is it's, it's better. I always believe truth will come out. And sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes now I have to tell my truth. Uh, and those that have waited patiently for many years to hear my side of the story um, will get it. Rumor and gossip have always followed me uh, across continents. And I think people need to know how I see it, what was my truth. And I think that's very much in my book, um, which is why one of the reasons I had to uh, write my book. But that is certainly not the only reason, because beyond clearing up misconceptions about me. I think what's important is that I share uh, what that journey meant, what it means to be, uh, to, to, to survive a, a career on three continents, what it means to survive the setbacks that I faced, which were wrenching setbacks, personal and professional, uh, how you rise above that and, and still um, come out smiling. Um, that's the story. That's the story. It's the story of my making, breaking, and remaking as a man. Amazing. So would you like to um, uh, turn the book into a movie someday, into a biopic? Well, I'm sure at some point it will find um, an expression, either as a film or as a television series or an OTT series. I'm sure it will find a place somewhere, whether here or abroad, I don't know. Uh, I didn't structure it in the linear form of a series, but it certainly could be structured that way. And there is a huge story to be told in there, which traverses many generations in a sense. Um, but it is also the story of the first crossover actor that went from India, from Bollywood and made a career in, in Hollywood. And the, 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 the perils and joys of, of that, uh, as well as the incredible stardom that I saw in Europe, which is something um, that was a life-changing experience for me and something that made India really proud. So many things are in that that could make a great uh, series. Um, there are lessons to learn from that. But in the end, who makes it, how it gets made, time will tell. Uh, there won't be any quick decisions on that. We'll wait to see what level of interest there is and from where. So if it does happen, is there somebody you think will be able to do justice to the protagonist role? <laughs> that I can't say. I cannot say that because obviously that's a casting decision. Whoever produces it um, by themselves or with me will make that decision. And we'll come to that decision at the point. It's far too early to be thinking of that. But um, it would be a hell of a role for any actor to play. <laughs> Surely. So revisiting the chapter with Siddharth, uh, it's obviously difficult to revisit those moments and write them down in the most, uh, I can say maybe there, there are emotions, but definitely you have to write it in a certain format, you know, in, a, in something that you can present it in the best way. What were the, uh, what, I mean, what was going on in your mind when you were writing that chapter? It was a desire to retell the experience of living through 
a process where a brilliant boy who had graduated from Carnegie Mellon University, the mecca of Infotech, suddenly could think and what that caused him and me and what it took to discover that he had schizophrenia and what it takes to, 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 to live with, deal with and care for a person with schizophrenia. To share that experience as well as to create a greater understanding about mental illness and try and remove the stigma that it often carries in society. And also to point out that it's not only the afflicted person who suffers, it's also those who take care of one with such an affliction. And the only way I could tell it was in the emotional terms of, of what I experienced. This is true of many things in the book. Whereas I can give you a general idea of, you know, the journey that I've taken from, from Delhi to Bombay to uh, advertising to theater to film to Rome to, to Hollywood. But what happens at each pivotal moment, at each great emotional turning point, that experience I can only share with you in the book because I've chronicled it heartbeat by heartbeat. And that's why I want people to read the book because hearing about it in the press creates an interest, which is marvelous. But I can't share the book with you because there's no way I could do that. It's an emotional experience. It was written in a state of great emotion. Uh, you know, you have been one of those uh, first actors who have gone, gone overseas. And Franka is now one of the biggest international celebrities now. Is that why uh, you chose her or was there some other reason to launch the book? You know, I've been so blessed because first, the cover reveal of my book was done by Salman Khan, who was an actor I admire and I've known for a long time. Uh, then when I reached out to Priyanka, uh, I was amazed she said yes, because she's A, so busy. But again, we have such a wonderful and long relationship. I've known her from her debut film in Bollywood, which is called The Hero. And we've always mutually supported each other. We're friends, we're friends. And she uh, responded uh, immediately and said, yes, of course, I'll, I'll do it. And we fixed the time and we got her on and she was absolutely magnificent at the uh, launch of my book. Um, she showered me with so many wonderful compliments for having been a trailblazer for making things easier for people like her. And we talked about our common journeys uh, from India to the international um, stage. It was uh, quite um, wonderful to be able to talk to somebody who has done that kind of journey, the same kind of journey that I did in a different time, in different circumstances, but we had the most heartwarming chat uh, about um, our experiences. Amazing, sir. Thank you so much for this time. I really had an amazing, this is an honor to be talking to you right now. Ranjan, it's absolutely wonderful. Lovely to be talking to you. <laughs>